How old is our crowd now? Six years. Six years, but it feels like you go for 60 years. That's right. It's a, yeah, probably most amazing disruption to venture capital the world has seen. Well, thank you. John, please. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Okay, so I want to get the energy level a little bit up here. I'm going to try to do three things in 10 minutes. I'm going to give you a quick update on the Israeli ecosystem. I'm going to give you an update on our crowd and how we do it and talk a little bit about our companies. So if I got control over this, I do. You guys all know, you wouldn't be here if you didn't know this, that Israel now is the second most important source of innovation in the world. Don't believe me, believe the World Economic Forum. If you look at the numbers, you'll notice that it's been unbelievable over the last five years. The amount of investment going into Israeli startups last year was six and a half billion dollars. What makes it unique is most of the money comes from abroad. In addition to that, our exit scene is what I would call robust, right? In other words, it used to be in the old days, we sold a lot of little companies for maybe 50 or 100 or a couple of hundred million dollars. Today, Israeli companies are exiting regularly at billions of dollars. Just look at Mobileye or look at the recent NVIDIA acquisition of Mellanox. In addition to that, as a result of this merger and acquisition activity, the pace of establishment of multinational R&D centers, meaning foreign multinationals coming to Israel and setting up for good has gone through the roof. Every two weeks, a new multinational is setting up shop permanently here in Israel. We are now approaching 500 of them. And it's extraordinary, they now actually employ about half of the Israeli ecosystem. Uh, there's a large crew of Israeli unicorns, okay? We're, closing in on about 10% of the world's unicorns. We're very proud at our crowd that we have six of them at the moment. Most importantly, Israel is taking a world leadership role in the creation and the funding of AI startups. You guys know that if you're trying to pitch a startup company and there's no machine learning or no artificial intelligence, you are screwed, okay? Just give it up. Don't even try to raise the money. Right, if you don't have an AI or an ML angle in your startup, go find another job, okay? Literally, it's that serious today. Look at those numbers from Forbes less than six months ago. It turns out that Israel and China are duking it out for number two in absolute terms. Not on a per capita basis, but in absolute terms, and that's extraordinary. Now, that's what it looks like if you take the entire ecosystem of Israeli uh, AI startups. By the way, not all 400 are on that chart. You can't do it. But it's not just AI. It's digital health, where Israel has a huge, not only core of companies with great algorithms, but a lot of data, because we've been collecting that data assiduously for the last 20 years. It's also an ag tech, 400 different Israeli ag tech companies, many of them using AI and ML to drive that. It's in cybersecurity, and it's also in automotive. Automotive today, you just saw a bunch of companies, 500 startups here in the automotive space, in fintech, in industry 4.0. By the way, the biggest industry here is making these slides, okay? There are many, many people who are generating these incredible ecosystem slides. This is, by the way, just Boston, Israel cybersecurity because cybersecurity today is 700 Israeli companies. You can't get them on a single slide. This is food tech, the new flavor du jour of the Israeli startup system, and even travel tech, which is bizarre. When I saw this slide, I said, what? Israel travel tech? I know it's a great place to travel, beautiful weather outside, wonderful beach, but technology in abundance here in that area. I stopped with those slides. So the question you have to ask yourself, especially those of you who are here for the first time, and I want to see a show of hands. How many of you are here today in Israel for the first time? Raise your hand. Okay, so we have a bunch of you. You probably ask yourself, what the hell's going on here? Why does Israel have this little tiny country, nine million people? Why do we have so much technology and so much innovation? And we could spend a lot of time, and Marco's not going to give me that time. But... <laughs> Okay, we'll do it in Zura. 
the reason that I understand this is that we have a thousands of year tradition of turning curses into blessings. Somehow we know it's almost like an Asian martial arts action. You know in martial arts that when somebody attacks you, if you can use the force of that attack on your benefit, you actually do much better. And so Israel takes curses and we turn them into blessings. Start with water. We had a great year this year for water, but generally this is what Israel looks like. That's a curse, right? No, it's a blessing. Why? Because we lead the world in recycling water today. 85% of our water is recycled. In the US, it's less than 1%. We invented drip irrigation. We lead the world in desal technology today. The majority of our water is drinking from the sea. It's turning a curse into a blessing. Another curse is that our kids have to go to the army. They don't only sleep in the dirt, but they risk their lives every single day. As a parent of kids who've done this, this is a curse indeed. But guess what? It's a blessing. Because our kids learn to be mission-driven. They learn to work as part of teams. They learn to improvise. They learn to lead. They learn that it's not just about me, me, me. It's about giving. And they get access to great technology and great units. This is turning a curse into a blessing. Another curse is we have no market. Any sane Israeli entrepreneur does not want to be the king of Tel Aviv. They want to go somewhere else. But guess what? That's a blessing because it forces our companies to become world leaders, to build the Wixes and the Mobileyes, the soda streams and the checkpoint. We don't want to be a local hero. We want to be a global hero, and that's a good thing for startups. Another curse is that there are certain parts of the world still where Israel is not, let's say, loved, where certain people would like us to sort of disappear. Well, I've got bad news for them. It's not going to happen, okay? But the good news is that, believe it or not, this hatred and this existential risk has become a blessing. What's the blessing? It focuses us on the preciousness of life. When Israelis drink, we don't say bottoms up, although we like bottoms up. We say to life. It's about life. It's about how precious. We're all going to die. I got bad news for you. The question is, what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to take risk and write a great play or compose a great symphony? Are you going to build a great company or try to get a Nobel Prize? Are you going to step out of your comfort zone? And we do that really well. We also love children. Turns out that our society now has the highest birth rate of the entire OECD, 3.1 children per women. And our life expectancy today is number seven in the world. And that's not just Tel Aviv, that's the entire country, the Bedouins and the Arabs and the Israelis, everybody, okay? And that is because we focus on life, which is turning that curse into a blessing. And finally, this is the way Israel really looks in the world. There's nothing there, it's a tiny little speck. I was sitting with a group of Japanese investors recently, showed them the slide, and there was some giggling in the front row. And I said, share the joke. Tell me why, why, what's funny about this? And they were embarrassed. And I, I, I was insistent. And I said, tell me what's funny about that. And the Japanese looked at me and very honestly said, Japan is huge. Look how big Japan is. Go look at how big Japan is to Israel. We are nothing. We are tiny. But guess what? That focuses us on the real resources, which are human resources not natural resources. It's how do you build a country based on Nobel Prize winners, where we have the highest world's percentage? How do you build a country where you educate your kids, 50% of our kids going to four-year education? And how do you spend proper money on R&D? And we spend the world's highest percentage of R&D for civilian R&D as a factor of our GDP. So it's this attitude of taking a curse and turning it into a blessing, which I think lies at the bottom of Israel's success. So our success at our crowd, and thank you, Marco, for talking about us starting six years ago. We've now become Israel's most active venture investor. 
And that's cool. That was last year from uh, PitchBook. Uh, this year, we were named again the most active investor. What makes it interesting, though, is we're not a traditional venture capital fund. We believe in venture capital best practice, but we're a platform. We allow accredited investors from all over the world to pick their own deals. You see these kinds of companies, and you're going to see, by the way, 10 different companies over the course of the next two days that are on the R Crowd platform. And if you want to invest in them, you go to our website, and you can actually invest from a minimum of $10,000. If you actually would like to invest in a fund, you can choose one of 18 different funds, and you can invest a minimum of $50,000. So it turns out that today, we've aggregated a billion dollars in commitments from around the world. We have 30,000 individual accredited investors who come from all over the world. We're hunting down the last 10 countries. Tonga is on my radar. If any of you know an investor in Tonga, please see me afterwards so we can get those last 10 countries. We have 170 portfolio companies, again, 18 funds, and most important, 29 exits to date. Our platform consists of the individual companies, the funds, the 30,000 individual investors, and a bunch of institutions and family offices and corporations who are investing together. We are building democratic venture capital because the cool part of that is you can be a dentist in Bangkok and you can invest your $10,000 in a great Israeli, US, or Chinese company alongside Goldman Sachs, Sequoia, or Microsoft, and you're paying the same price per share, you're getting into the same deal, that's what's democratic. The way that the platform looks, if you look at the companies, you'll see they are deliberately distributed from drones to ag tech, from food tech to cybersecurity, healthcare, software, and again, 18 funds. We are at the moment with about 24 different investment opportunities on our site. We're usually somewhere between 15 and 25. So you go to ourcrowd.com, you accredit, and you get to see these companies. And you will see that we are in, uh, also with the 18 different funds that range from mobility to ag tech to sports tech to uh, Right, actually, a new cannabis fund, which we like very much, and a whole variety of others. We had 11 exits last year, 29 in total. We're very proud of the companies who are buying our companies at the moment, and our median check size has gone up dramatically. We're right now writing an average check at the moment, about three and a half, close, coming to $4 million. But sometimes we go much higher, because we now have a big core of companies that are valued over $100 million with a bunch of unicorns as well. And you'll see that, you'll hear from a second in one of our companies, I think they're up on that list, it's called Theta Ray. And Theta Ray is one of those companies where we've written a $10 million check. And we're not done, because we're not a venture fund. Classically, we can keep on growing our position. So we start with a couple of million, and we add more money as the crowd gets to understand the company. We see that opportunity. We're delighted to be here. I don't want to take any more of your time. Please, welcome to Israel. If you want to talk to one of my uh, partners here, there's Noah Pickholtz, there's Shani over here, who's waving, okay? And you can get information about our crowd or go to our site, ourcrowd.com. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Noah. Thank you.